everybody, I'm Luna. Welcome back to Luna Oi. This week, two superstorms have wreaked havoc on both sides of the world, as Hurricane Ian was devastated in Cuba and Florida. Super Typhoon Noru blasted Japan, the Philippines, and Vietnam with winds reaching as high as 250 km per hour. Currently, I live in Da Nang, Vietnam, and we were hit directly by Super Typhoon Noru. It was the strongest typhoon that Vietnam has had to deal with in the last 20 years, and for me, personally, the worst storm I ever experienced in my entire life. In today's video, I will give you a quick but detailed on-the-ground report about how Vietnam deals with natural disaster in general, and specifically with Typhoon Noru. Half of Vietnam is bordered by coastline, so we have been dealing with severe weather and typhoons for thousands of years. Last year alone, we had to deal with about 10 major storms and typhoons, so I gotta say that we have a pretty good experience dealing with natural disaster. So let's look at how Vietnam responded to the threat of Typhoon Noru. Noru developed surprisingly quickly, so our disaster preparations only really began about 4 days before the storm hit Vietnam. Our central government began by issuing many emergency announcements to warn and notify people in the dangerous zone that danger was on its way. At the same time, our weather service estimated the level of damage we could expect and come up with plans to help people survive the typhoon with the least damage possible. About two days before the typhoon hit, we sent military and national security forces out to the affected regions to help evacuate people away from dangerous zones. And we did it so effectively that it only took us about a day and a half to evacuate a total of around 870,000 people to shelters. We also always made sure that there is plenty of food, medicine, blankets, and pillows provided to everyone in the shelters. Here you can see military chefs cooking delicious and healthy meals for evacuees. In Da Nang, crews came out all across the city to start cutting tree branches and prepare the infrastructure for the storm. As the evacuation was underway, we also sent military, national security, militia members, and volunteers to go and help people fortify and stormproof their homes before the storm arrived by placing sandbags and water bags on the roof to stop them from flying off, boarding up doors and windows, and moving vehicles and electrical equipment to safe places in case of heavy flooding. Besides the direct help from the government, Vietnamese people also help ourselves. A lot of house owners, Restaurants and hotel owners turn their buildings into shelters and provide the shelters to people in need. They also prepare clean water and food for their guests, all free of charge, of course. One restaurant owner said that when he gave some food and snacks to a family who came to his house, they refused the food, saying they already brought their own and asked him to please give the food to other people in need. This small story says a lot about Vietnamese people. We are not rich and we have to deal with a lot of hardship but we always care for other people and are always willing to help each other even in the darkest times. In my city, Da Nang, about four hours before the typhoon hit, the government announced a curfew order. Nobody was allowed to go outside of their houses from 6 p.m. until the typhoon was over. In the middle of the night of September 27th, the typhoon finally arrived. The top wind speed was over 200 km per hour which made it a Category 4 storm, which is really serious. Like I said earlier, the typhoon hit Da Nang directly. After a few hours, we lost electricity and the internet, but we expected that. The early morning of the storm was very scary. We could barely sleep at all as the wind crashed against our doors and windows from the outside. In the middle of the night, we had to wear ponchos to go outside and unclog all the water drains from our roof and balcony, or else our house would be flooded from the inside. EJ had to wire this window shut, but for the most part, everything was fine, even though it was miserably cold and we didn't get much sleep at all. Around 8 a.m. next day on September 28th, the wind slowed down, the rain calmed to a drizzle, and the typhoon was finally over. Immediately, my neighbors went out to fix the damage, sweep the leaves from the street, and we all began to relax a little. We took our motorbike out to see how the city was affected by the storm. We saw a lot of Vietnamese people from every walk of life, including military, national security and militia, chess collector, just union members, and just ordinary Vietnamese volunteers and neighbors coming together to quickly fix the damage and clean the city as soon as the typhoon was gone. 
Community members went to each other's homes to help repair damage and to cut and clean tree branches that had fallen and clear debris. One interesting thing about Vietnam is that the government will fix damage to people's homes absolutely free. Military, construction crews, public security, and other groups go all around the nation to repair everything back to the way it was before the storm. Our house didn't get much damage, but a big branch did fall right in front of our house and slightly damaged our balcony. A crew came and fixed the balcony and neither we nor our landlord had to pay any money. There was not even any paperwork. They just fixed it and then moved on to the next house. And this was within just 24 hours of the storm ending. I'm from Thanh Hoa, Vietnam, and we have a bad storms and flooding all the time in my hometown. I can say that my family's home has been damaged many times in floods and severe weather, and the government always fixes our house completely free of charge, usually within a day or two after the storm. It's just a totally normal thing in Vietnam, and the government has even completely relocated to safer areas that are affected by flooding, mudslides, and other natural disasters. Anyway, just three hours after the typhoon ended, we were already seeing the roads getting cleaned. Here is an interesting Vietnamese tradition. After heavy storms, it's really easy to catch fish and shrimp. So dozens of Vietnamese will gather to watch the fishermen and maybe buy some fish for dinner. It's like a little carnival by the sea. The next morning, just 24 hours after the super typhoon, things are almost back to normal. Roads are getting cleaner and cleaner, and I believe that everything will be completely back to normal in the next three days. Nuru was a Category 4 typhoon, the strongest typhoon that we have had to deal with in 20 years. But I think it's safe to say that Vietnam successfully managed to minimize our damage and protect our people. According to the latest statistics, 57 people were injured by the storm, with no deaths in Vietnam. 3,200 homes were damaged. 94 houses were totally destroyed. Lots of farmland and trees also got damaged. But the government will ensure that all of this damage is fixed promptly and nobody will have to pay for any of these repairs. And nobody will go hungry or leave without shelter because of the storm. Our Prime Minister Phạm Minh Jing said in one of the meetings about the typhoon, we will not let anybody be cold, be hungry, be sick, or be houseless because of the typhoon. And I strongly believe that we can and will live up to these words because I have already seen it happen so many times before. The government helps people in devastated areas with support, compensation, and aid, all based on a just system. The system works and it's one of the great things about living in Vietnam. Now, let's take a look at what has been going on out there on the other side of the earth. On the exact same day that Typhoon Noru hit Vietnam, September 27th, another Category 4 hurricane named Ian hit Cuba, then moved on to the state of Florida in the USA on September 28th. The hurricane hit Cuba pretty badly and hit Cuba's national power grid hard, leaving 11 million people without electricity. But so far, there have been no deaths, same as Vietnam. Lots of Cuban families lost their homes, but the government will rebuild them for free. Meanwhile, in Florida, the situation is terrible. At the time of recording, we have no official final statistics about the storm, but so far, about 13 deaths have been reported and we know that thousands of houses have been totally destroyed. 2.5 million people are now living with no electricity and no clean running water. The differences between the way socialist nations, even poor socialist nations like Cuba and Vietnam, respond to disaster versus the way a supposedly wealthy nation like the United States respond to national disasters is pretty clear. While Vietnam successfully evacuated nearly a million people out of the dangerous zone, the cops in Florida just drove their cars around and screamed through a speaker, basically telling everyone they were on their own. Emergency services will not be available. Please evacuate now. Whoa! Is this the best that the greatest, wealthiest country on earth can do for its people? Vietnam and Cuba may be poor developing countries, but both nations have done a great job providing for the people in time of great crisis. Unlike the USA, where there are still people who have never fully recovered from Hurricane Katrina, 
almost 20 years ago. Looking at pictures and watching videos of people suffering in Florida without receiving any proper help from the government is heartbreaking. My heart goes out to all of you who suffer under capitalist oppression in the USA. Whether you've been abandoned by ice storms in Dallas, been left with poison water in Flint, Michigan, Hawaii, or Jackson, Mississippi, or if you are suffering now in Florida, I don't know what to say. You shouldn't have to be on your own in times like this. It looks like there's no future for many of the people who lost their houses due to Hurricane Ian in the USA, and that's really upsetting. As for Vietnam, I can safely say that we are going to be okay. I hope that the USA can someday build a better system where the people come before capitalist profits. The first step might be having some humility and realizing that you can learn things even from poor struggling victims of US imperialisms like Cuba and Vietnam. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.